Hello, my friends. Hello, and welcome once again to Stately Vaughn Manor, where it's the Robert E. Howard Show. It's the Robert E. Howard Show once again, and today is a special Robert E. Howard Show. I'm going to be talking about my Robert E. Howard origin story, my life reading Robert E. Howard, and I've spent a good chunk of my life reading Robert E. Howard. Most of it, I think. Yeah, I started reading Robert E. Howard when I was probably around 13. So that would be 1984. Started reading Robert E. Howard in 1984. And I've been reading him ever since. And so when I was a kid back in the 80s, I became obsessed with this author, Robert E. Howard. There was something about his writing, something I couldn't put my finger on. It wasn't just the adventure and the monsters and the fantastic pulpy storytelling. I loved all that, of course, but there was something else about his writing, and I didn't figure out what it was until years after this, until 1989, when I picked up this book. This is Cthulhu, The Mythos and Kindred Horrors by Robert E. Howard. It's from Band, Band Books. It's a collection of Robert E. Howard's horror stories. And Band decided if they put H.P. Lovecraft's Cthulhu on here, everyone would buy it. But it's a collection of Robert E. Howard's horror stories, some of which are sort of kind of connected to the Cthulhu mythos. But there was an introduction to this volume which really struck me. And I realized after reading this introduction what it was that spoke to me so much about Robert E. Howard's writing. I'll read you just a little bit from the beginning of the introduction. And I think you'll, you'll see. This is from David Drake, wrote this introduction. Robert E. Howard had the personal misfortune to spend most of his life in a place where black hatreds ruled everyone, where currents of violence so closely underlay the surface of ordinary existence that a snub, a woman, or the ethnic background of a chance acquaintance was apt to bring a lethal outburst, where a man's only path to respect was through strength, and his willingness to use that strength. I don't mean Peaster in the post-oak country of Texas, where Howard was born in 1906, nor Cross Plains, where his family settled a few years later. Rural Texas had its share of color and violence, certainly. Cattle ranches, oil rigs, and men who could remember the Comanches. But residents of small towns in West Texas had small town virtues, of which respectability was probably the most prominent. Other writers of the Prohibition era, living in the low-rent districts of major cities, were in a far more violent milieu than was Robert E. Howard. But we humans don't live in geographical locations. We live in our minds. Everything we see, everything that happens to us, is filtered through our perceptions, and the world beyond the immediate range of our senses is wholly a mental construct. Our beliefs are more important than our memories, and memory is selective even when it isn't false. The world, the scheme of belief, expectation, and selected facts within the mind of Robert E. Howard was a grim, dark place, and it killed him before he was 31. And at that point, I realized why I liked Robert E. Howard's work so much. He put some of so much of his own dark, pessimistic, grim viewpoint into his fiction. It permeates all of his fiction, and it raises it above just what could be pulpy adventure fiction, which is it, which it is, and that's great. It's great pulpy adventure fiction, and I love it, but it's more than that, and yeah. When I read this, I got it. So, of course, I was familiar with Robert E. Howard before I even knew that I was, because my introduction to Robert E. Howard was the same as a lot of people's introduction. It was this. People of my generation, this, is, this was how we knew Robert E. Howard at first, usually. It was Conan the Barbarian, Conan the Barbarian from Marvel Comics. When I was a kid, comic books were everywhere. They were all over the place. 
And when I was growing up, I don't even remember what the first comic book I read was because they were everywhere. And I read tons of comics when I was a kid, never stopped. But I loved Conan. I loved the Conan comic book. All the kids in my neighborhood loved Conan. He was very popular. This is a Conan comic book from 1980. This is illustrated by big John Buscema. And John Buscema's work had such an influence on me, uh, such an impact on me that even now when I read Conan, I picture Conan looking like John Buscema's Conan. So this was huge. But at the time that I was reading this as a little kid, I had no idea that Conan was based on a character in books. I just knew him from the comics. It was a little later in, like I said, when I was 13 years old, that I first picked up the original Conan books that were published. At the time, uh, they were published by Ace. A little later, as a teenager, I started picking up back issues of this. This is the Savage Sword of Conan. This is the black and white Conan magazine with the black and white comics. But this was important because this had actual articles in it. And a lot of the articles in this were about Robert E. Howard, of course, and Robert E. Howard's work. So this is where I learned most of what I knew at the time about Robert E. Howard. It was from back issues of Savage Sword of Conan. This was, this came out when I was just a little, little kid, this one. So I picked this up as a back issue. I grew up in San Leandro, California, and we had one comic shop called The Comic Shop. And that's where I picked up most of these old Savage Sword issues. And that's where I learned about Robert E. Howard, the author. Of course, the first books I picked up were from this series. These are the original Conan books. There were 12 books in this series. And I learned at this time that not all the stories in this series were written by Robert E. Howard. Notoriously, the Conan series was edited and added to by L. Sprague de Camp, and Lynn Carter did some stories too. And L. Sprague de Camp took some Robert E. Howard stories that weren't Conan stories and turned them into Conan stories, which was very controversial. But at the time, this is the only way you can get Conan. And of course, this has the great Frazetta cover. They had, this series had great Frazetta covers. Boris Vallejo also did some awesome covers for Conan. This is volume three, The Freebooter. But I learned early as I was reading these that Robert E. Howard was the creator of Conan. He created this character back in the 30s for Weird Tales magazine. He only wrote some of them. And when I, I actually, this, is, this was the copy I owned when I was younger. And I actually highlighted and underlined the stories that Robert E. Howard wrote in this volume. As you can see, it's only three stories, I think, in this volume. Everything else in this volume is written by DeCamp or Carter or, or was a Howard story that was, that was changed into a Conan story by L. Sprague DeCamp. This bothered me because even as, as, a, as a young person, I was a Robert E. Howard purist. And as a young person, back in the 1980s, you know, these were the days before we had the internet. There was no internet. So if you wanted to learn about an author and, you know, you want to find out more about them, tough. There's no internet. You can't look him up online because there was no online. And because of that, there was also no place to buy books online. There was no Amazon. There was no Barnes & Noble online. There was no eBay. Tough luck, kid. No, you had to search through the used bookstores because at this point in the 80s, most of Robert E. Howard's books were already out of print. He had a big surge in the 70s where he was very popular. And a lot of Robert E. Howard books were printed in the 70s. But by the mid-80s, a lot of that went away. A lot of those went out of print. And so 
I searched through all of the used bookstores. I hunted for Robert E. Howard. I hunted for his books. Uh, at the same time, I was also hunting for Edgar Rice Burroughs' books and the old used bookstores in San Leandro and thereabouts. Most of those bookstores, I think all of those bookstores actually are long gone. All of those great bookstores I used to search, search through for Robert E. Howard books, just a memory now. They're all gone. But I had a great time doing it. And I found some good stuff. And I will show you the stuff that I found back in those days. This was the first Robert E. Howard book I read, actually. This was Almeric by Robert E. Howard. It was his interplanetary adventure. It was his version of A Princess of Mars, which I read before I read A Princess of Mars. And I found it fantastic. I thought this was great, man, when I was 13. And I read this before I read the Conan books, but of course, it's by the, the creator of Conan. So, of course, I, I, I picked it right up. And it was here that I learned that Robert E. Howard, who wrote this book, was the creator of Conan. I stumbled on this book kind of by accident, just looking through books that I was, you know, because I was interested in fantasy and horror. And this is one of the first fantasy and horror books that I bought with my own money. And, it, yeah, I was hooked. And from there, I went and found the, all of the original Conan books and learned that Conan was edited by L. Sprague de Camp. But there was a lot of other stuff out there. Uh, this line of books, which was by Berkeley. I think it was Berkeley. Was it Berkeley? Yeah, it was a Berkeley book. This, this line of Berkeley books, I have just a few of them here. I have all of them, but I just brought out a few, were probably the ones I picked up the most. These seem to be the most available. And I found out a lot about Robert E. Howard from these books. This was one of the first volumes that I got that had Robert E. Howard's horror stories in them. And this one was cool because it had the little poster that comes out. Isn't that cool? That's cool. This dude's going after this crab with that tiny ass little, cl little club. And I think this guy's going to die because that club is just too small to fight a giant crab. That's my opinion, but you know, but this was cool. And it had a bunch of horror stories in it. And Gahan Wilson did the introduction to this one. And he basically said in the introduction, Hey, these aren't Howard's best stories. Although I like black Canaan a lot. He said, these aren't Howard's best stories. They're for the completist. For the, they're for the person who's really intrigued by this author. And I was. So this was one of the ones I remember a lot. The other one that had a big impression, that left a big impression on me was this one. This is Marchers of Valhalla. This has a lot of the fantasy stories that were not Conan or Cull or Bran MacMorn. A lot of his other stories are in this one. And it was really cool, and I found out that he wrote about pirates, Black Bull Mare's Vengeance, right here. We got some pirate stories by Robert E. Howard. And I learned that he wrote westerns, which I thought was really cool. I've always liked westerns. So we have this great collection of westerns. This is The Last Ride by Robert E. Howard. This was really cool. So these are some of the stuff I picked up. I learned that he wrote historical fiction, historical adventure fiction, with this book. This is The Road of Azrael. Uh, and this was Pocket Books, I think, did this one. And, you know, picked it right up, read it in an afternoon. Uh, it, was, it was great. So I learned about Robert E. Howard's historical fiction from here. Uh, a lot of, or some of this stuff, all Sprague de Camp, adapted and changed into Conan stories. So it was cool to read the original stories as Howard wrote them in this book. There were some other cool things that I picked up. Zebra had a line of books and I don't have it here with me, but they had Worms of the Earth, which was the first Bran MacMorn volume that I picked up. 
I had that around somewhere. But this is like this is more Western stories. When I picked this up, I didn't know that because how would you know that just from looking at this? Especially when it says science fiction on the back. Thank you, helpful zebra. But this was pretty cool. Zebra had a whole line of Robert E. Howard books with these weird covers. And this is where I learned that Robert E. Howard wrote boxing stories. I didn't know he wrote boxing stories. Again, they, they tell you on the side here that it's science fiction. It, it's not. It's boxing stories. This is The Iron Man by Robert E. Howard. This is the first time I learned that there even were such a thing as boxing stories. Back in the 30s in the pulps, they wrote stories about baseball and football and boxing. He had stories about all of that stuff. And Robert E. Howard was way into boxing to the point where he actually was part of a fight club that in the local ice house, a bunch of guys would get together and beat the hell out of each other. And Robert E. Howard was one of those guys who was in a fight club at the ice house. <laughs> He's one of those guys beating each other up. He talked about Fight Club, though. You know, he didn't follow the rules. So then we've got Sword Woman here. Introduction by Leigh Brackett. This was really cool. I didn't know about Sword Woman. And then you just had random collections of Robert E. Howard stories. This one is great. The terrifying titled Pigeons from Hell, which made me laugh and still does. What a great title, Pigeons from Hell. Scary story, though. I like this one. So Zebra had some really good books that you would find, and I found them all, uh, including some various oddities. This is Tigers of the Sea with Cormac MacArt, a hero that was never published during Robert E. Howard's lifetime. All of the stories in this book were posthumously published. And this one was really cool. This is The Howard Collector. Uh, the Howard Collector was, I believe, a little fanzine or a fan magazine. And a lot of the stuff from that was collected in this book, The Howard Collector. So there was some interesting stuff in here, including some of his poetry and some other stuff that you just wouldn't find elsewhere. So this was really cool. I found all kinds of really cool stuff when I was a teenager, including some of some really important things. Uh, one of my favorite Robert E. Howard books, do I have a copy? Here it is, was this one. This is the Skullface Omnibus, which reprints Skullface and others, Arkham House, Arkham House's first hardcover collection of Robert E. Howard, which was the best Robert E. Howard anthology ever. And so this was an English uh, a British reprint of that. But before I found that, I found the Skullface Omnibus in three paperbacks with these goofy ass covers, but they're great. This is the volume one, Skullface. Then we've got Valley of the Worm with that little dude up there fighting the worm. That was a good story. And finally, we have the skinniest cull who ever existed Someone give Skull a sandwich. He needs something, this poor guy. But this is the Shadow Kingdom. This one has Cull and Conan stories in it. But all together, this makes up that omnibus volume. And this is just a great collection of Robert E. Howard. I was super happy to find that. Arkham House also came out with The Dark Man and others, a collection, a hardcover collection from Arkham House, which was reprinted with this Awful, awful cover from Lancer Books. This was, I don't even know, there's like a dog that's also a bat and he's sneaking up behind this barbarian who's dumb, too dumb to turn around. But as bad as this cover is, this book is great. It's a great book, terrible cover. You know how that goes. So that's some of the stuff I found as a teenager that, that fueled my love of Robert E. Howard. The most important thing, perhaps, at the time was this series of Conan books that was edited by Carl Edward Wagner. We have The Hour of the Dragon, The People of the Black Circle, and Red Nails. 
because this was important because at the time this is the only way you can get the original versions of the Conan stories without all that L. Spragdy Camp Lynn Carter nonsense in there. But they, at the time, Carl Edward Wagner didn't have the rights to print all of the Conan stories, so it's an incomplete set of Conan stories. Eventually, uh, Fancy Masterworks printed, was it in the late 80s or early 90s, they finally printed everything that Robert E. Howard wrote. I'll throw a cover up there if I remember. Uh, they had a two-volume set that I no longer have, but that was reprinted in this big volume. So if you have this, this is that. This is the Fantasy Masterworks edition of Conan, which was the first time that all the Conan stories were published as Robert E. Howard wrote them, or at least as they were originally published in Weird Tales. Important, important stuff. Later on in the 90s, it became kind of a dark time because all of the Conan books went out of print except for the pastiche novels which were printed by Tor. So for, their, for a long time in the 90s, you couldn't get Conan in new editions as they were written by Robert E. Howard. Everything went out of print in the 90s except for Tor's Conan. You could only get pastiche Conan, and very little Robert E. Howard was printed in the 90s. There was one set of books, though, that came out in the mid-90s, which came out from Bayon Books. That's this set, which, oddly enough, the first book of the series was Cormac MacArt. Uh, entertaining stories that were not published during Robert E. Howard's lifetime. I don't think I've talked about these yet. But so they came out with a set of books, which was really excellent, Bayon Books did. And it was needed because by this point in 95, there was nothing out there. And so this was great. Unfortunately, Bayon Books printed it with the cheapest paper imaginable. I mean, it, if, you, if you find these now, they're just, they all look like this. And they turned brown immediately. They, got, they darkened up, like, right away because they literally used the cheapest paper they could find. But they had some good books in there, including this great edition of Solomon Cain, which has uh, his fragments, Robert E. Howard's Solomon Cain fragments, completed uh, by Ramsey Campbell. Uh, so you get, and Ramsey Campbell did the introduction to this volume. So it's excellent. You had uh, the first complete edition of the Bran MacMorn stories, uh, that was excellent. I was super happy to find that. And they had all of these cool collections of horror and fantasy stories. So this was an excellent set from Bayon. I mean, crappy paper, but it was great. And it was the only thing... It was the only thing you could find in the 90s. Because the 90s were a dark time for Robert E. Howard. And, it, and they were. Now, little did I know that over in England, uh, a company called Wandering Star was reprinting Robert E. Howard's books in these deluxe, beautiful hardcover editions. But then, in the early 2000s, finally, probably the ultimate edition, well, definitely the ultimate edition of Robert E. Howard, began to be published with this, The Coming of Conan the Sumerian, from Del Rey. Man, I was so happy to find this so happy that they started publishing this during the early 2000s and throughout the early 2000s. Uh, I was still super into Robert E. Howard, of course, always have been, so I picked up every one of these, and this is still the best edition of Robert E. Howard that you can get, are these Del Rey volumes. Get them, get them all. And that was around the time, in 2010, I actually went to Cross Plains, Texas, uh, for an annual event they have called Robert E. Howard Days. Robert E. Howard's house is a museum now. And so I got to see Robert E. Howard's tiny little house. I saw the tiny little room where he wrote his amazing stories. And 
I got a new appreciation for Robert E. Howard. Picked up a couple cool books, too. This book of poetry from Robert E. Howard, I picked up there at Robert E. Howard's house, which is now a museum. Has a little gift shop in there. Picked up this, The Man from Cross Plains, a celebration of Two Gun Bob Howard, edited by Dennis McKinney. Has a bunch of different things in here about Robert E. Howard. I assume this is probably still available if you go down there for Robert E. Howard days, which I think are still happening. Uh, I got a lot more stuff. That's just the tip of the iceberg, but you know, we're already at 25 minutes. But that's just a little bit about how I've been obsessed with Robert E. Howard forever and continue to be. This is probably the best time to be a Robert E. Howard fan because Robert E. Howard's work is almost all in the public domain. You can pick it up pretty easily, uh, especially if you've got an e-reader. But even in book form, now that we have those Del Rey editions and we've got eBay and we've got Amazon, it's easy to get his stuff. A lot easier than when I was a young Robert E. Howard fan. So anyway, I'll shut up now. I've talked long enough. I will catch you next time.